Hey guys, I am really excited about today's video. I'm so glad I got my hands on these. We are talking all about the Spectrum X Katie Jane Hughes brushes. I have the entire set here with the little travel case as well as the little towel and I have been using it for the last like week and a half. I wanted to get an idea of how I liked these brushes, how they felt, how they worked, how they cleaned, how they work in my routine. Um, I have not looked at the guide yet, which tells you ways to use each brush. I just did it based on intuition, what I thought each brush would be really good for. So I thought I would talk to you about what the brush guide says versus what I used it for, or if it was intuitive enough. Um, and any that I don't think are necessary or what I think about them, all of the juicy details. So before we get into it, I would love if you would like this video to let me know that you like brush reviews and in-depth reviews like this and then subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on any of my videos and yeah let's go ahead and get into it all right we have so many brushes to get into yes this was fairly expensive but for the amount of brushes you got it's not that expensive especially with the towel and the travel case it comes down to here's the math right here i have not done the math um after using these brushes i 100 percent think that it was worth the money that I spent. It was like around $200 ish. Again, the real math will be here. Um, and you get so much and I don't feel like there's a lot of like excess with this collection. Um, I feel like every brush kind of has its purpose and its use and it's not like some brush collections where you get like three of the same brush that are like barely any different. These I feel like are all quite different for different uses. Anyways, so first thing across the board, the quality of these brushes, the color, the build, it is a lightweight brush that has just enough weight so that you don't like lose it in your hand. I know sometimes I will go to use a brush and it's so light that like it falls out of my hand. You know when you're like holding your phone and you just throw it for no reason? Just me? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> um, it's, it doesn't have that effect. Um, so I feel like it's a nice weight that's like lightweight so it's not tiring to your hand. Um, the construction of these is really nice. There's no wiggly bits. It feels really nice. The coloring with the gold and the green and the beautiful little inlay, super beautiful. Um, she said she designed these to be like painter's brushes and I'm definitely getting that feel based on the shape where it's a little bit thinner here and it goes up to this bulbous area and then it has another pinch. That way you can really grab here and then rest it on your hand and the shape is beautiful to do that very like artist situation but it is quite thin here so if you need to go for a lighter application you can. Really love the quality of these. Um, if you don't want to get this collection or this big of a collection, I know she is breaking down the collection into smaller collections, which should be out soon. Um, so I would go follow her on Instagram and follow Spectrum to get more details on that. But based on this alone, I would say Spectrum brushes are probably really good. Like if Katie decided to work with them and the, this is the quality of the brushes, I can't imagine that the quality of Katie's collection is vastly different from the quality of their other collections. So if you find a smaller collection or they also have like mermaid designs and fun things like that. If you find another collection, I would say it's a really good solid uh, brush <sighs> brush company. <laughs> like, um, So I do like the overall construction and all of that good stuff. Um, they are all very soft. They are all really full of bristles. Even if they're like not as dense and they're a little bit more floppy, they are very bristle heavy. They do not feel scratchy in any way, shape or form. It actually kind of reminds me of like, oh gosh, I don't know, like petting my cat or like a chihuahua, no chihuahua, a chinchilla. <laughs> like it's a very soft even when you like go against in a way that the brush is not like shaped to do it doesn't feel like pokey or anything like that so I really really love that let's talk about the little accessories you get 
This is super nice quality. I love that the top is clear so you can see the brushes you have in there. You can make sure that they are not getting bent, like the bristles aren't going weird ways. And you can wipe that part because it's like this nice plastic and also the lid is like this faux leather situation. So it's all very cleanable. Whereas the bottom part here ooh, has like this velvet inset, which will really help to take care of the feral um, section, you know, the stick and the feral. Um, it'll keep that nice. It won't like, it's not too harsh to where it's gonna bang these up and make these look really distressed. Um, but this kind of fabric would be terrible to put the brush heads in because it would just get so dirty and you wouldn't be able to clean it. So I think it's a really innovative um, little travel case. Um, it is quite a large travel case though, so you can fit all of these brushes in it and probably a couple more if you wanted to, honestly. Um, I get that it is nice to have these two set up kind of how I had them in the beginning, having a little bit of, you know, might separate your brushes or have clean brushes versus dirty brushes. But for me personally, I do think that this is like a little bit big for that kind of situation. I typically use one of these and these are very small. I like my brushes to be upright. Whereas if I were to take these brushes and put them in here, they're kind of splayed out. And I just personally don't love that. So for me, this will way more be used for travel or for like safekeeping. Like if I were moving, you know, I would put these in there. Or if I needed to clean up all my makeup and have nothing out, then I would put them in here. Um, but I probably wouldn't leave them out in here because to me this is just a little bit too wide but it is a huge blush, blush collection so it makes sense um and then the towel if you know me actually i don't know if i say it often actually on my channel but i always have a microfiber towel with me i bought i bought so many of these i think like a pack of 150 from amazon and i have like this lime green color a blue color and a gray color and I, whenever I'm doing my makeup, I always have one of these out either right on my table or on my lap. And as I am doing my makeup, uh, I want, I use this for bronzer. Now I want to use it for brush. I just wipe out my brush. So I use a towel all the time. I love that it comes with a towel that matches it. Just makes you feel fancy. So if you are getting ready, like say it's a girl's night and you guys are going to go over to each other's house and get ready. Yours would be all cute, matchy, matchy. Really love that. Um, I love having a towel like this. I'm glad to have another. Oh, I'm glad to have another one in my collection. But again, if you don't purchase the, this collection or don't purchase the one with the towel in it, um, just any microfiber towel really works. Honestly, they don't feel the same. This definitely feels softer than the microfiber towel, um, but it works just the same. But I do like it. It's very cute with the little moniker. So cute. Okay. Now let's get into the nitty gritty details of these brushes, what I use them for, what I think of each individual one, and compare it to what this brush guide says. Brush number one. This is a, the biggest brush. It is got, it has this mm, egg shape almost. It is densely packed, but it does have that angle, which gives it more flop up here, more density here. You can see flop, density, flop, density. Um, it is so incredibly soft of a, of a brush. Um, and it has that like shape to where you, me personally, I would use it either this way and make uh, use of the top bristles to blend or I would use it this way to really get it into like a contour of my face, like really into the contour or kind of here this way. But actually what I've used it for is like lightly setting my face with powder, just a light situation. It packs on the powder, but it doesn't pack on too much. And it has that different variation um, of bristles lengths you know like having the longer ones here and the shorter ones here so it really helps you to get in these areas if you want to um i don't set my face that often this is a little bit denser of a brush like i wouldn't be able to take 
like this brush, I can take powder and swirl around my face because it's a very floppy brush. This is a little bit more dense. So I think most people would probably like this for like a powder contour, um, but I like it just to set, set some powder. So that's what I've been using this for. This is not a staple brush. This is not a brush I would probably reach for the most out of all of these because I have I like the big fluffy brush. I like a big fluffy brush. And usually when I'm actually contouring and really trying to get into that contour, I'm not using a powder, I'm using a cream. And I haven't used this with a cream, but to me it just doesn't feel like something I would use with a cream. So let's read what she says. The biggest brush in the collection. I was hesitant at first to have a brush this large in the kit, but a lot of people like a brush this big and I've been loving using it for bronzer. That's so funny because so to Katie, because she uses very small brushes if you follow her, she very particularly places foundation in exactly where she wants the foundation. She doesn't do a big old sweep like a lot of people do. Um, so to her, this is a really big brush and to me it's just not like, this is my favorite bronzer, powder, everything brush and it does, you know, maybe this way, but like this is, it, but this is super duper floppy as well so um yeah i like this brush but for me this would be the one that i could probably pass on out of almost everything in this collection there might be like one more that i think are like not a dud but like i don't see it using it in my collection but yeah the number two brush this is a small brush let me show you it compared to here it's a little bit smaller and it is pinched. Um, it has kind of a like little paw foot, uh, a little paw type shape. I don't know how to describe that. Um, but it is pretty floppy of a brush. Um, and again, these are all just like so soft. So what I have been using this for is actually foundation. So I know that Katie paints on her foundations and her concealers and all of that. So I was like, I wanna be like Katie. So, I mean, even in today's look, I used this to paint, you know, the foundation onto my face. It's nice and small enough to get into the crevices of my face. I don't like to use it under my eye, um, but it is really nice at just kind of getting that color everywhere and you can pat like you would with a standard kabuki brush or you can swirl it around if it's something that like you're mixing, you have like, you know, your primer and your highlighter and your foundation just dotted on your face and you wanna do a mix um, on your face. So I've really been enjoying this. I've used it with a few different foundations and I don't find that it makes anything look really streaky. I do have a difficult time blending like just around my mouth and like under my eyes, um, but I use my sponge. I'm a sponge girl, so me picking up this brush and choosing this brush is crazy you know so i do like this to give me that like beautiful skin like finish soft coverage situation but i do also think this would be really nice for a um contour you know powder contour bronzer any of that got good stuff so let's see what katie says brush number two is for a simple and straightforward blush brush that can be used for any powder and cream products as can all of the brushes this one's a little bit more dense than brush number three wow so she wanted this to be a blush brush i can see that but to me this is way more like contour and then blend it type situation um or like i i've been using it foundation that's interesting okay okay so the number three is what she talked about so i think what she did here is the number two and the number three are very similar shape but the number two is a densely packed brush and the number three has this duo fiber situation where there's a bunch of long bristles and interspersed in there there's short bristles it's a very similar idea to the elf 105 which i think these are the most perfect kind of brush for cream. So I think her intention was powder brush, cream br brush. She did the same with brushes four and five. One is all the same length and one has that like mohawk situation going through it. So let's talk about brush number three. I did use this for cream blush. I think it's a really nice cream product 
um, situation. I feel like I could have used it for foundation, but it would have given me a lot lighter of an application. And you know, I don't, I just, I needed more. I could see myself using this with the Auric Glow Lust. I feel like that would give me a really nice blend for that. But I have mostly found myself using it for liquid and cream blushes. I think it's a really nice shape and it has those little, little tips that can help blend it without getting it just like over overboard. Um, so I do really like that for that. So she said, beautiful duo fiber cheek brush that can also be used for foundation or placing contour. I love this brush. It's really soft and delicate and works beautifully with creams and powders. I've never used a brush like this with powders, but I am intrigued, but I do like this brush and I've used it pretty much every day. Now on to the number four and the number five. They are both this kind of angled brush shape. This one is the one with that duo fiber. And this one is the one with all the same fibers. This is like the softest brush in the whole collection. I think because it's like not as densely packed, so it has a little bit more flop. It is so soft. The ends of these bristles are so soft guys i don't know i don't know what they did but these are the the most soft the most um but uh as we're gonna suspect she's gonna say i really love this for doing a bronze and contour and you can go kind of uh you know thin wise and go directly into your contour and then you can go wider and kind of blend it upwards and i think it's really beautiful i love it for the forehead specifically compared to my other brushes in my collection because it's really good at those little bristles are good at getting that color into your hairline which is always difficult for me because i'm so pale that my scalp will look super pale compared to my bronzer so i love this brush and then this one like i was saying it is so soft mm, i love it uh great for powder products powder bronzer uh, great to just set your face as well if you want to use like a lighter because the last one is a little bit more dense if you wanted to use a lighter uh, hand I guess a lighter set of powder um, I really like it and clearly I have been using it as well so we've got number four another lovely duo fiber brush typically duo fiber work beautifully with creams and non are for powders but again there are no rules but oh and then number five says Really good angled brush, great for shading and for blush if you really want a soft impression. Also great for powdered uh, powder with the tapered point. We're on the same page, Katie, thank you so much. Okay, number six is this lovely little guy. Now I have to say I was fully like influenced by Katie for my use of this. I've used it for liquid highlight because that's what she does just to get the tiniest little perfectly pinpointed highlight and it's almost like i don't know if it's duo fiber but it does it does like it's way more dense down here and it thins out at the top kind of like how this one does as you can see here like these are shorter and this is clearly longer um but it's obviously this like arrowhead type shape um so i think i've only used it for liquid highlighter i like it i think this one would be really good for like cleaning up if you did like a wing like a little you know um if you had a stubborn foundation you couldn't get into the concave of your nose the curves of your nose whatever you want to call that um, I could see using this like if you're being really artistic just like with a swipe of liquid cream shadow like boom across I think it is I don't have a brush like this I probably wouldn't have picked up a brush like this but I do like that I have it in my collection I feel like when we get closer to these next brushes here you're gonna find out like I don't really have a lot of like detail brushes um, in my collection and I don't really use detail brushes um, that often so these that she has are so detailed and like perfect for a detail that it makes me want to do more things with my eyeshadows and such so before we get into that let's read what she had for number six typical foundation brush however it works beautifully for powder placement so yeah i could definitely see if you only 
want to powder like right here let's just do it let's do it right now I'm gonna take this Charlotte Tilbury so it did pick up a lot there can you see okay so we've got glow going on right Wow yeah oh yeah that would be perfect especially if you have dry skin or if you want to keep the glow to your face to really really pinpoint and pack on the powder in a very specific manner I'm gonna go, go ahead and do the other side beautiful lovely I would never use this for foundation unless I was just doing it to apply like if I wanted to just if I wanted to use multiple shades or multiple colors and I just shoot, shoot, boom, 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 and make some little marks and then use a sponge or another brush to blend it out. I don't think that I would ever like fully like spend the time painting my brush with this. That would be beyond, that would be too much for me. The number seven is what she has next here. Um, I really like this brush. I assume she's gonna have a different reason based on where it is in this lineup. Um, I really like this brush for putting on my potted concealers, my MAC Paint Pot, my Becca Under Eye Corrector, my Flower Beauty Chill Out Corrector. It's the perfect size little, um, it's like half of a kabuki almost, but it does have a tip. Like this is, mm, this is higher than the other bristles. So it's really good at like placing that and then helping you to blend it out or like covering the entire lid cutting out that or carving out that brow if you do that sort of thing um so that's what i liked it for and have been using it for let's see what she said really versatile large smudgy and wide type pencil brush great for around the entire lash line or for blurring the lip edge and placing concealer in large spots so i see her using this for like a spot concealer blurring her lip um and yeah i could definitely see like making like a big smoky eye and like really hitting up that lash line but there are some smaller ones that are about this um shape that i would probably use for that more so um so i will continue to use this for you know my basically primer or potted concealers the number eight brush this is a pretty small brush and it's a little bit tapered it's a little bit like the end of a finger, if that makes sense. It's kind of floppy, but it does have like more of a structure to it. So I would say this is pretty dense. I like using this to set my under eyes. I have been using other brushes that are way bigger. I don't think I have any here because I've been using this one ever since. And this one is really the perfect size. Now, I don't have a problem using the larger brushes, brushes to set under my eyes normally. Like if I'm doing my makeup alone, because then I can take a big old brush like this, I can go like this and really set my under eye perfectly fine. But when I'm filming, I like to be looking at you guys. I don't wanna be doing all of this all the time, like constantly looking up. So I love this brush because I can look at you and still hit this under eye without any irritation, nothing goes into my eyes. It's super soft and gentle around my eye area. It's got a good little angle so that it fits right in there. I really love this for my under eye powder. Let's see what Katie said that it's for. Um, a brush so amazing, we gave you two in the set. You can use it as highlighter, bit of concealer, oh wait, bit of contour, concealing, and powder. So they're saying, no, these are not the same brush. So I think they're saying these are the same brush. We gave you two of them, but these are clearly different brushes, right? These are clearly different brushes. This one has a taper. Is it not supposed to have a taper? I think maybe mine was a mistake, but I love it. I don't know if you got this collection or if you know someone who did, let me know so I can watch their videos too. This one is for sure tapered. Like I've got short little bristles and then on this side I've got long bristles whereas this one is kind of tapered all around like a standard blending brush oh that's so interesting okay so this one i've been using for setting my under eye this one i really like for powder highlight is what i like this for i can't imagine contouring with this like 
I already have such a deep natural contour right here. I would not want to go this specific unless I were trying to counteract that. Um, so I like this for powder highlight and it reminds me of my standard powder highlight brush. It's just this one is like pinched so it's got like that wideness and this one's just the same all around. That is so interesting. I mean I would this is probably a good size to use under your eye anyway, right? Like I can still do it, but this one is perfect. These are different. These both are marked number eight. That's interesting. I'm going to have to investigate that. All right. Number nine. This is an infamous brush on Katie's uh, stories. She uses this brush for so many things. Um, it is a short bristled wide flat brush. Yes. Right. See? Um, great for the lash line, really getting some right up in there. Great for cleaning up, you know, because it's got such a long situation. You could probably even just like pack it so that you're not <sighs> subjecting yourself to the possibility of messing up when you swipe. If that, if that makes sense. But what I really like using this for, this is a very weird thing, is you see how I have mascara here? I like going back here and using it to clean that up. I like this because I can get behind my lashes without messing them up. Let's see what Katie says. Um, this brush is really unique because you can put it in the waterline with a cream liner or you can clean up any mistakes around the eyes or the lips. Oh, that's quite interesting. You could place a cream eyeliner in there. I would have never thought about that. Interesting. Okay, number 10, right? Yes, number 10. This right here is a blending brush, an eyeshadow blending brush. Now, I was a little bit nervous because it is a different shape than my standard eyeshadow blending brushes. My favorite eyeshadow blending brush is the NYX number 16. And then there's this one. So my next one, they're about the same like height, but this one is much more of like a tapered rounded. And this one is way floppier, like way floppier than this one. This one has a little bit more density to it. Um, so for me, this, I could see blending out things. In my opinion, I thought that it would blend out things to be more sheer. So I could place it and then sheer it all the way out into nothingness where I was scared that this one would be just a little bit too pigmented but there are so many bristles in here and they are all so soft that it blends like a dream it is so lovely to blend eyeshadows I was not expecting that when I saw this I was like oh, I'm not gonna like that brush and then I used it and I was like oh I really like that brush so it helps you to keep the pigment but it is so soft and it has so many different bl uh, and it has so many bristles that it does really blend out things into nothing, like all the way up to your brow bone. It's super beautiful. Let's see what Katie said. A great everything blender. Easily get around the nose and eyes, and you can blend your eyeshadow, use it for concealer, blend in lipsticks, and prime the eyes with it. So yeah, you know, Katie is a multi-use person. She loves using little brushes like this around her face, and I don't really love using little brushes like this around my face so I can see that I wouldn't use it for that but I will definitely be using it to blend my eyeshadows brush number 11 so this one also is kind of a uh, blender brush but it is a pinched blender brush as you can see it's still quite fluffy it has a lot of movement to it but it basically reminds me of almost like this kind of brush that is like the number seven but more of a blender because it has the longer bristles um so this one's really nice for you to do the crease work this way and then you can blend it going this way so i would use it kind of in the way that i use my refer number one the refer one is tapered on both ends, so it goes tapered this way as well as tapering that way, which this one doesn't do as much. It's a little bit more just rounded at the top, um, but as you can see, they're very similar like length and density, so I feel like these would be in the similar realm. The refer one is not as floppy. 
Um, so this one will probably get you more payoff than this one, but this one's really good at blending into the crease. That's what I use it for. Let's see what Katie says. Probably my favorite eyeshadow blending brush. I love it for concealer as well as eyeshadow. Perfect for cream shadow shadows and powder shadows. I've not used this for a cream. Um, I usually wouldn't use something this loose or floppy with a cream eyeshadow. Typically for cream eyeshadows, I use a dense brush. For cream face products, I would use a looser brush. Um, but I do like this with powder brushes and I think it really helps to blend. Like it's a very nice soft, but you can get into the crevice of your eye. And it's like quite pinched enough to where you could almost blend out underneath your eye too, if you wanted. All right, we've got number 12. Speaking of cream eyeshadows, I use this for the cream eyeshadow that is on my eye today. I think it really did a good job of placing the color and the depth where I wanted it and then blending it out really well. Um, this is the standard style brush that I would use to do my under eyes, a little bit of a smudger brush. I do have quite a few different of this similar kind of brush here where it's a small but fluffy little moment. This one is, I feel like a little, yeah, it's a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter, so it is a little bit more stiff um, than some of these ones that I have, but clearly I have four in my collection. It is a favorite kind of brush. I love using it for my under eye, packing on the outer corner, but this one was really nice and it worked really well with that cream shadow as well because it is shorter and denser. Great for lash line detail or blurry lip, ideal for all small details. Exactly, Katie, exactly. Now we need brush number 13. Okay, this is a little bit smaller of a blending brush. Oops. Here's the number 10, which is the standard blender. This one is like a blending pencil brush. So it's like a pencil, a blencil brush. It's like a pencil brush, but it's not um, as stiff. I don't know why I'm doing it that way. It's got a little bit of a flop to it. It's got a little bit of a roundness to it. So this is my kind of shadow also to blend underneath the eyes, um, to really get in that crease and deepen it up, especially if I'm going to do a like cut crease type eye. I like to have that darker ring above it, right? So this would be a really good way to like pack that color and blend it. But since it is soft, it can blend. So let's see what she said. A slightly longer, version of a pencil brush to give you more traction with a little bit of movement in the bristles. Same thing, Katie, that's exactly what I said. All right, number 14. This is a flat brush, a concealer brush, a packing brush, a cut crease brush, and it has this beautiful little um, arrow tip situation. So it is a very similar shape to that foundation brush but it is very small. So I can see her saying that this is for like spot concealing, but this to me is like the perfect kind of cut crease. You can get really into that inner corner. It's very thin. It holds a lot of product though. And you can really like use the angle to kind of line where you want and give you the shape that you want. Um, I really like this. I used it today for this shape that I have going on and it worked beautifully. This was a cream shadow as well. Um, so yeah, that's what I would use it for and what I will continue to use it for. I don't have a concealer packing brush that is this shape. I have, I don't know where it's at. I do have a brush that is, oh, here it is. Okay. I have this BH Cosmetics brush, which is a very similar shape. It's obviously a little bit bigger, but it is more of like a fluffy brush. So I like this one to do like outer corner work instead of like the topper work. So I'm really glad to have this. I will definitely be using that. Let's see what Katie said. I wanted a brush that felt pointy but flat so you could do a lot of detailing with it. I like this because you can create a lovely cupid's bow for your lip or you can get it in the right in the inner corner of your eye with cream shadow. I just, I'm not, I'm not a makeup artist. So using brushes on the lips is not really a thing that I think about very often. All right, number 15 is another little smudgy blender brush. This one, however, is a little bit, where's the last one? Okay, yes, it's a little bit thinner. This one is much more dense. 
this one. This is the 15 and the 12. Let's see, Ooh, 12, 15. This one is thinner. It has like less bristles um, and it is a little bit taller. So it has a little bit more give to it. Whereas this is really going to be able to pack on a lot of color or blend out a difficult color. So when you have something that won't move, you wanna use something more dense so that you can kind of like get the product to move. Whereas this would be a lot softer of an application. I used this with my cream uh, shadows today as well. And it really is super beautiful. I could see you using this for like a cut crease, but to me it's just a little bit too much. Like here is, here is the one that I used to use for my cut crease. See how much thinner, I don't know if you can see any of these things that I'm showing you, but like see how much thinner uh, this is um, width wise. This has too much bristle for me to do that, but I could see using that and I think it would be really good for here as well. Super nice brush. One of my favorites, I love using this wet and packing on a metallic shadow or around the lash line or even for concealer or a lip color. So I guess she would use this um, like that, but I just think it's a bit much, but I'll have to try it like that to see if it's really good at just picking up colors. We will see. Number 16, this is one of the ones that I have not used. There are three brushes here that I have not used at all. This one is one of the ones, like I said at the beginning, where it's like, I wouldn't have bought this on my own. I probably won't use it very much. This is another one that I won't use very much, I don't think. So it is a long, thin, flat brush. I'm really curious to see what Katie says it's for, like maybe painting on lips, maybe spot concealing. These are things I don't do. Um, I guess you could, I, I mean, at some point in my life, I'm sure when I need some sort of detail brush, I might use this to help me, you know, build out a liner or something. But like overall, I just don't, I don't see an everyday regular use purpose for this specific brush. Let's see what she says. A really long brush that allows for you to really draw on the lip color perfectly, as well as painting on any kind of, I eyeshadow cream textures and formulas. So yeah, maybe if you were literally going to be painting onto your eye, it would be good. And then again, like I said, I don't really use lip liner brushes, uh, but maybe I'll use it for like to conceal around my lip liner when I wear like a red lip or something. Um, I'm sure that I will use it. This is just another brush that I would say like 17. Okay. This is a lovely little baby blender. Reminds me a lot of my, where are you at? Oh, my NYX number 44. So this is the KJH Spectrum 17 and the NYX 44. The NYX one, as you can see, has a little bit more of a taper at the very end, but the size of them is very similar. And this brush is great for detail blending. If you want to have a really, really deep crease but you don't want that crease to go blown out across your entire eye. You really wanna keep it tight. This is a beautiful little blending brush to get that blend there without blowing the shade out. And you can also use it underneath the eyes. I think it would be good to have like a, a really, really soft inner corner because it is so small. You could do a like nice soft powder um, inner corner. It would be really good for blending right up in here, giving you a lovely little What's this called? Halo eye effect. Really beautiful, small blending brush. Does not hurt your eyes at all. Like, it, like I'm poking my eye. It doesn't hurt at all. It's, these brushes, man, they're so good. Let's see what she said. A really great, small, delicate, petite blender. Brushes like this are few and far between. I like this because it's one of those necessary ones for really small details and even smaller eyelids, especially if you, are trying to you know blend out with this one and you just don't I mean this is pretty big for me and I have I mean I have small medium eyes I don't have the smallest eyes but I don't have big eyes um, so if you have really small eyes something like this might be super overwhelming for you whereas something like this might be the perfect size to get in where you need it number 18 is similar to the number 13 but it is much smaller and more delicate looking here 
Um, and I mean, same thing. This is a little bit more stiff. This would help, especially around the lash line to deepen that up, but still blend it. Um, really good for the lower lash line for anything you want to keep kind of tighter to the lash line. It would be really good for the inner corner highlight. Um, my, let's see, what's this? Sigma E30, this is what I usually use for my inner corner highlight, but I could see using this because I don't really need that point since I typically do blend it around a little bit. I don't do like a direct pinpoint. So something like this would be really good to kind of blend out an inner corner highlight. I really like that brush as well. Like I'm saying, like this collection has brought so many smaller, more delicate detail brushes to my collection. It's like gonna be a game changer, I hope. <laughs> I hope that it helps me to have tighter, more intricate blending abilities. I'm really excited. Let's see what she said. And really essential pencil brush that is nice and pointy at the tip allows for you to get into the lash line, create an interesting detail, or you can use it to pinpoint, conceal, or blur your lip. She's gonna put blur, blur your lip on every brush, huh? All right, the number 19. This one is another smaller blender. Let me pull up the number 17 again. So the number 17 is a little bit shorter and a little bit more rounded. So that would be better for getting into the crease because the, so your crease looks like this and the brush looks like this. So while it's pinpointing your crease, it's also blending right here. Whereas the number 19 is a little bit more flat on the top which means it would be like this. So it's not gonna get that very crease, but if you use it on a flat part of your lid, it's going to really help you blend that out. Like if I wanted to blend this out, I might use something like this instead of something like this because that would be pulling color from down here up. It would be blending way too much. Whereas this would just soften that edge of your liner. It'd be really good for the lower lash line to do that as well. But again, a flat brush is better on a flat surface because using that tip, unless you're really just trying to like pack it on there, that tip isn't gonna do any blending for you. Only this portion will. So let's see what Miss Katie said. Another one of the smaller petite blending brushes, this one is for the crease or the lash line to really build shapes, shadows, and details with. I can definitely see you building shape with this because it is flat, it would build the shape on the edge of it. It would not blend the edge of it like this one would. If that makes sense. Hopefully I'm making sense, I don't know. Number 20, now this is the kind of brush that I would use to cut my crease with. Very thin little concealer brush. It has like sparse kind of brows where you can, brows? Bristles, um, where you can kind of see through it. It has this rounded top that would really help, especially if you wanted to do like the halo kind. Um, Raw Beauty Christie loves a little brush like this that's rounded, um, but it does thin out really, really nicely. So I feel like if you were to get some concealer on here, ooh, baby, that would be a beautiful cut crease brush. Um, I believe I've used it for my inner corner. Yeah, I think that's what I did today. I think I used this for my inner corner and it's really nice. I had already done my lashes, so it was really nice to help me pull that highlight right under my lashes and kind of go right in there and you can also get that curve of your eye really nicely let's see what katie says really great flat concealer brush or good for eyeshadow cream blush a brush what cream eyeshadow yes agreed i thought she was going to say lips for this one too this is the number 21 this is an even smaller little pencil brush let me grab the last one this is the number 18, okay? The 21 is tiny, super duper tiny. Would be great for the inner corner. I used it today to put this dark shade in my inner corner area, as well as create this kind of shape and line. So I think this would be really great for creating shapes that you wanted like a little bit of a blend to. I didn't want this to be like a graphic line. I did want it to be a little bit blended, but I still wanted to have the shape, the round inner corner shape. So that's what I used it for and what I would love to use it for. Number 21, a dream cut crease brush to draw in under brow details, or you can even feather 
brow products with a brush like this because it's pointy enough and small enough, but it's not too dense to where you would create a line. Interesting, I can't imagine using that in my brow. Interesting. Yeah, no, I will probably continue to use it as a detail brush. I also used it on the lower lash line to really get this deep color here. Okay, number 22 is an eyeliner brush. And I have not used this. It's one of the other ones that I have not used. I did wash all of these brushes. They all held up really well. They all went back into shape really, really well. And these eyeliner brushes are kind of like stiff, right? So I was like, well, when I wash it, is it going to get soft? So it is still quite stiff, you know, if you go straight at it, but if you were to kind of like blend around, it does have some movement since it is actually multiple bristles and not just one. But I have never in my life used an eyeliner brush. I do not do graphic liner. I feel like using this brush along with, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the number 24, which is I think a little bit yeah, longer. Very, very similar but the 22 and the 24. So this one is longer. This one does have more, like see how much more easy, like this one doesn't do that. This one has more bristles um, than this one. I guess I'm gonna be watching a bunch of cut creaser videos um, and seeing how she does it because I'm scared to use these, but I will try at some point. I'm sure I will film it so that you guys get to enjoy the ride with me but I have not used these. So these are the other two along with, yeah, these are the three that I have not used um, yet. So, well, let me go ahead and read this for you. Number 22, iconic eyeliner brush, great for bold wing, dense enough to apply a decent amount of product, but pointy enough for precision. And the 24, inspired by nail art, art brushes, I've made tweaks to my favorite makeup brushes to make them a bit more like art brushes. This brush is really long, thin liner brush. It's great for longer, thinner lines with precision. Okay, and then the last brush we're gonna talk about is the number 23. This is the eyebrow brush, baby. It's got a nice little spoolie here, and then it has this teeny tiny little angled brush. This is more so the kind of brush that I would use for doing liner. I would go floop, and then floop but I have not used this side of it yet. I have used the spoolie. It is really nice. This is the spoolie that I typically use. It is a little bit closer. I don't know if you can see this. Um, let's see. So this one is the one I normally use. This one is the KJH one. So this one, as you can see, has like smaller, closer little areas where this one is a little bit further out. So I feel like this one is better at getting in there and pulling product and moving it around. Whereas this one helps you get a lot fluffier of a look. So yeah, but I like it. I enjoy having many, many of these around because I never do anything with my brows very well. So I like having to, or being able to just brush through them whenever. It's a very soft um, kind of spoolie and it isn't irritating. Um, I know that uh, sometimes they can be super stiff, um, but this is really nice and soft and I don't think it would hurt. Yeah, no, it would not hurt even if you were to use it for removal of that mascara that gets on your lid. So I wanted to create an eyebrow brush with a really nice eyebrow liner brush at the end that could actually double as an eyeliner brush for eyes. Definitely store this spoolie side down to keep the bristles on the brush side nice. So she did intend for you to use this, first of all, like with like dip brow, right? But also as a liner brush. So that's really exciting. Um, I do not do it bristle side down because I want to know where this is, but maybe I will because Katie said. But yeah, that is all of the brushes. I have been filming for like an hour. I hope this video is entertaining, informative. I hope this video is informative um, and that you stick around to watch it. <laughs> I just wanna say this entire collection is beautiful. It's made super well. I definitely think for everything that you're getting and how good the quality is, it is worth the money if it is in your budget and it is on your radar if you need brushes. Like, don't go buying a $200 set of brushes if you don't need brushes, okay? If you need brushes, if you want brushes, if you're wanting to 
revamp your entire brush collection and get really worthwhile brushes. I definitely think these are worth it. Um, so if you just needed someone's blessing to go ahead and do it, you have mine. Um, but again, she is supposed to be coming out with, well, her and Spectrum are supposed to be coming out with smaller selections of these brushes, which will obviously be less money. If the details are already out, I will go ahead and place them here. Um, but if they are not, go ahead to Katie's um, Instagram as well as Spectrum's and they update you regularly there. But yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, this very, very long video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out so much. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.